Hi everybody. Welcome to the last talk of the nine day Holy Spirit Novena. I pray that this time has been a rewarding and enlightening time as you got to uh, listen to the amazing speakers share their, their love and their knowledge of all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Today we're going to speak on the Holy Spirit and the amazing part of it. But first, let me introduce myself. I'm Tina Schoenfelder. I'm a wife, a mother, and uh, been involved with youth ministry for a lot of years in the Archdiocese of Edmonton and uh, help direct the Edmonton Search, uh, a youth retreat that goes on. So my talk is to talk about the fruit, the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And it's not fruits with an S, it's just fruit. Um, but before we go any further, let me start with a prayer. So in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Holy Spirit, we are living in God's grace, and we are called to use the gifts that he has given us. Help us to see the fruit of the Holy Spirit come out in our lives and in the lives of others. All for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When Jed and I were first married, um, he grew up in BC and he was so excited to have me experience some of the things. And we went on a road trip. And during the road trip, he uh, pulls over into a little Ma and Pa fruit stand. And he was just so excited and I didn't know what he was so excited about. And he goes over and he comes back with this big bag of peaches. And he grabs this one peach and he washes it and he just takes this huge bite. No, he didn't wash it. He takes this huge bite of this peach and he just bites into it and it was running down his hands and he just loved the, the goodness of that fruit. But that's not the fruit we're talking about today. We're going to talk about a different fruit, a most amazing fruit that God saw that we needed in our life, that Jesus said, hey, I'm going to die, I'm going to rise, and then I'm going to send a helper. And this most amazing helper is the Holy Spirit. We, we really can't do anything on our own. Um, we're kind of like dumb sheep sometimes. One thing I do know is that God loved his son so much and that love connection of a father loving his son came the Holy Spirit. And in turn, Christ loved us so much and so strongly that he died for us and then said, hey, I'm sending this Holy Spirit to you. We celebrated Easter 49 days ago. We're on the eve of Pentecost when the apostles met in that upper room and the Holy Spirit came upon them in a powerful, powerful way. Christ knew that we needed help and he uses um, Paul as the instrument to explain it to us. So in the New Testament, Paul wrote um, about the community of Galatia, uh, the Galatians, and today we call it Turkey. Um, in his writings, uh, he names the fruit of the Spirit. So if you have your Bible, you can turn to Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Paul talks about the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. When I was looking at it, I was like, I wonder why he called it fruit. It's kind of a weird word. But fruit, he meant that it would be a result of, or a deed, or an action. God is so amazing. He has made our faith be action. He has made us be a participant, an active participant in this. And the Holy Spirit does the same thing. Um, fruit is actually a good thing, as you saw my husband eating it and the peach juice running down his hand. Um, for those that get to harvest those peaches, it's a result of their hard work and careful tending. Um, the fruit in us is the work of the Holy Spirit that works in and through us. Um, fruit is not something that you can grow on your own. Uh, you can't just go to a store and say, hey, I want to buy some love and some joy and some peace and put it all in your basket. It, it doesn't work like that. Um, we have to allow the Holy Spirit to work in us. So why fruit? 
Fruit is most important because we're not designed to live that way in our own power. In the chapter, or in the verses just before um, Paul talks about the fruit, in the previous uh, verses, he talks about um, the opposite. It's not fruit, it's flesh. Uh, flesh of the spirit, idolatry, impure thoughts, sexual immorality, um, drunkenness, jealousy. There's a, there's always a tug of war that goes on with people. Paul talks about the fruits of the flesh and the Holy Spirit, the fruits of the Holy Spirit, which are the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. In the verse earlier than that, he says there's a tug of war. So if you've ever been to Camp uh, OLVC, you'll know exactly what I mean. The kids line up on one side and the other kids line up on the other side and there's a pull. Fruit is fruit. There's good fruit and there's bad fruit. In Matthew, it says you'll know a tree by its fruit. My kids used to hate that saying, but it's true. You'll know a tree. You'll know somebody by their fruit. A good tree grows good tree, good fruit and a bad tree grows bad fruit. So when we nurture our relationship with God, we become more loving, we become kinder, more forgiving. It's naturally what happens in us when God is doing a work in us through the Holy Spirit. In John 15, it says, 15, 5, it says, I'm the vine and you are the branches. So we've got an amazing um, God that knows that we as humans need help. The other cool thing about this fruit is that the Holy Spirit is a gift given to us. It's nothing that we can decide. How do you say? I, I can decide to be loving or more loving or more kind. But I need the help of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit guides us to spiritual maturity. And it gives us roots to grow in our relationship with the Holy Spirit. If we want to be more like Jesus, the Holy Spirit is there to help us to get to that point. It helps us to see we are moving in the right direction. And we can monitor our spiritual growth by the fruits. Fruit is evident of being connected to Christ. And there's actually three fruit that I want to talk about. Um, when you look at the list, it's always love, joy, peace, patience. But I wanted to go down farther in the list. And one of the first ones that I wanted to talk to you right now as we've gone through um, this pandemic and everybody's had to possibly take time off work or work extra hard because there has been people taking time off work is patience. Um, when our kids were little, little, I prayed for patience and the kids were the worst that week that ever. And I went back to prayer and I went, Lord, I prayed for patience. And in that quiet voice in my head, he said, I gave you every opportunity to have patience. How did it go? So I learned never to pray for patience because, uh, yeah, that week with the kids when they were little was pretty crazy. So right now, um, one of the gifts that you may uh, be nurturing with the help of the Holy Spirit is patience. Patience means to be long suffering and it bears fruit without complaint. So instead of being short tempered, you're long, you have more patience. And that's one of the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit that I think is growing in a lot of us right now. Another um, gift of the Holy Spirit, or sorry, the fruit of the Holy Spirit that's growing right now is faithfulness. Every Saturday night or Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon or Sunday evening, um, a lot of us gather our families and sit in our living room, our living room where our kids have played Lego or ate food or had a sleepover has now become our sanctuary, our holy place, and we watch mass. It's called to being faithful in a time where we can only have spiritual communion, where we have to use the gifts that we've been given and continue to stand firm in our faith and continue to be a people of hope. 
of people that have faith. Faithfulness means that you're firmly devoted to God, you're loyal, and your belief in Him is strong. So I know it's not always easy being faithful in this time. It's definitely been a, a memorable time to celebrate weeks and weeks of Mass with our kids um, through the Easter uh, end of the Lent and, and through the Easter season right now. So that could be another fruit that uh, the Holy Spirit is growing in your life. As some of you know, I'm a grand total of five feet tall and uh, I can be kind of feisty sometimes. And one of the gifts that's been uh, nurtured or somebody would always say, you're so gentle. And I actually found it an insult. And, and I don't know why, but I did. But as I looked at the fruit of gentleness, it means to be humble, non-threatening. And it actually comes from a position of strength and authority. And it doesn't mean that you're weak or passive. And I always saw gentleness as weak or passive. My mother-in-law is in the last stages of Alzheimer's. And the nurses that work with her, whether they're Christian or not, have just a truly uh, amazing gift of gentleness with her. Whether they know it or not, the Holy Spirit really works with them because it is such a special ministry to work with people in their last stages of life. Earlier I mentioned the scripture John 15 5 and it says remain in me and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, he can do nothing. When our grandson was baptized, it was so special to watch him receive the Holy Spirit. And as our kids went through the other sacraments of confirmation, how the Holy Spirit grew in them. It's like that with the Holy Spirit and the fruits. Through baptism, we get the seed of faith. It's planted in us. And as we grow in our relationship with the Holy Spirit, it helps grow the fruit in our lives. Because without being connected to the tree, the main branch, we can't do anything on our own. But as we do, we become more Christ-like. So what happens to us when we have God's Spirit in us? Um, if you've ever bought some grapes and you take a bite and there's a whole bunch of seeds, that's kind of like us. The seeds are planted in us through um, our life experiences and coming to know and growing our relationship. Um, it germinates, it begins to grow. As parents, we help germinate and grow the gift of the Holy Spirit in our kids. Um, with time and sunlight and water, a crop will grow. But with no water, no sunlight, it stunts and neglects it. So we're called to uh, nurture our relationship with the Holy Spirit. We're called to surround ourselves with things that will help us grow. When we're experiencing fruit in our lives, we began to understand more fully the gift of the Holy Spirit, and it helps us to be more committed to our relationship. So how can we grow fruit in our lives? How can we nourish it? How can we encourage the Holy Spirit to uh, keep growing amazing fruit, much fruit, as it would say in John 15? Um, one of the most important ways is to read scripture and spend time in personal prayer. Uh, find your personal space, commit to it, be disciplined, and watch the Holy Spirit grow the fruit in your lives. Um, we're gift to have many amazing priests, so when we're able to again to have uh, regular confession, they even encourage you to go once a month and to... Uh, to make room for good fruit to bear in your life by going to confession. 
uh, attend Sunday Mass, even though we can't right now when the time comes to um, be faithful and start encouraging your family and friends that are discouraged in this time to attend Mass again. Um, blessed to spend time with Father Mark in adoration um, a few weeks ago, even though it was via a computer screen, it was still the most amazing thing to spend time in adoration. It's another way to grow the fruit in your life. We're blessed with so many amazing devotionals like the Rosary, um, like this Novena. Um, you can do corporal works of mercy in your lives to help grow. Um, it, it truly is unlimited what we can do to help grow the Holy Spirit um, and watch him grow the fruit in our lives. So I just want to close with um, the closing uh, prayer for the ninth day of the Novena. The gifts of the Holy Spirit perfect the supernatural virtues by enabling us to practice them with greater docility to divine inspiration. As we grow in the knowledge and love of God, under the direction of the Holy Spirit, our service becomes more sincere and generous, the practice of virtue more perfect. Such acts of virtue leave the heart filled with joy and consolation and are known as fruits of the Spirit. These fruits in turn render the practice of virtue more attractive and become a powerful incentive for still a greater effect in the service of God to serve whom is to reign. So thank you everybody. I hope uh, I hope you uh, have enjoyed your nine day novena. Thank you to uh, all those who have done the organizing. It is definitely a special gift when we are in a unique time of being at home. And we'll just close with prayer. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Come, O Divine Spirit, fill my heart with thy heavenly fruit, with charity, with joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. May I never weary in the service of God, but by continued faithful submission to the inspiration and merit be united eternally with thee in the love of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great day, everybody, and uh, cheers to an amazing Pentecost.